This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Chapter 7. Church and School Yes, my friend, it has always been so. That is, law and government have always been on the side of the masters. The rich and the powerful have always doped you by God's will, with the help of church and school. But must it always remain so? In the olden days, when people were the slaves of some tyrant, of a czar or other autocrat, the church of every religion and denomination taught that slavery existed by the will of God, and that it was good and necessary, and that it could not be otherwise, and that whoever went against it went against God's will, and was a godless man, a heretic, a blasphemer, and a sinner. School taught that this was right and just, that the tyrant ruled by the grace of God, that his authority was not to be questioned, and that he was to be served and obeyed. The people believed it and remained slaves. But little by little there arose some men who had come to see that slavery was wrong, that it was not right for one man to hold the whole people in subjugation and be lord and master over their lives and toil, and they went among the people and told them what they thought. Then the government of the tyrant pounced on those men. They were charged with breaking the laws of the land. They were called disturb disturbers of the public peace, criminals, and enemies of the people. They were killed, and the church and the school said that it was all right, that they deserved death, as rebels against the laws of God and man, and the slaves believed it. But the truth cannot be suppressed forever. More and more persons gradually came to see the agitators who had been killed were right. They came to understand that slavery was wrong and bad for them, and the numbers grew all the time. The tyrant made severe laws to suppress them. His government did everything to stop them and their evil designs. Church and school denounced those men. They were persecuted and hounded and executed in the manner of those days. Sometimes they were put on a big cross and nailed to it, or had their heads cut off with an axe. Other times they were strangled to death, burned at the stake, quartered or bound to horses and slowly torn apart. This was done by the church and the school and the law, often even by the deluded mob in various countries. And in the museums today, you can still see the instruments of torture and death which were used to punish those who try to tell the truth to the people. But in spite of torture and death, in spite of law and government, in spite of church and school and press, slavery was at last abolished. The people had insisted that it was always so and must remain so. Later, in the days of serfdom, when the nobles lorded it over the common people, Church and school were again on the side of the rulers and the rich. Again, they threatened the people with the wrath of God, should they dare to become rebellious and refuse to obey their lords and governors. Again, they brought down their maledictions upon the heads of the disturbers and the heretics who dared defy the law and preach the gospel of greater liberty and well-being. Again, those enemies of the people were persecuted, hounded, and murdered. But the day came when serfdom was abolished. Serfdom gave place to capitalism with its wage slavery, and again you find the church and school on the side of the master and ruler. Again they thunder against the heretics, the godless ones, who wish the people to be free and happy. Again the church and school preach to you the will of God. Capitalism is good and necessary. They tell you you must be obedient to your masters, for it is God's will that there be a rich and poor, and whoever goes against it is a sinner, a nonconformist, an anarchist. So you can see that the church and the school are still with the masters against their slaves, just as in the past. Like the leopard, they may change their spots, but never their nature. Still the church and school side with the rich against the poor, with the powerful against their victims, with law and order against liberty and justice. Now, as formerly, they teach the people to respect and obey their masters. When the tyrant was king, 
Church and school taught respect for and obedience to the law and order of the king. When the king is abolished and a republic is instituted, church and school teach respect for and obedience to the republican law and order. Obey. That is the eternal cry of the church and school, no matter how vile the tyrant, no matter how oppressive and unjust law and order. Obey. For if you will cease obedience to authority, you might begin to think for yourself. That would be more dangerous to law and order, the greatest misfortune to church and school, for then you would find out that everything they, they taught you was a lie and was only for the purpose of keeping you enslaved in mind and body. So you should continue to toil and suffer and keep quiet. Such an awakening on your part would indeed be the greatest calamity for the church and school for master and ruler. But if you have gone thus far with me, if you have now begun to think for yourself, if you now understand that capitalism robs you and the government with its law and order is there to help do it, if you realize that all the agencies of institutionalized religion and education serve only to delude and keep you in bondage, then you might feel rightly outraged and cry out, is there no justice in the world? This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.